I mentor my great friend, the great Les Brown. He's uh, he's a life coach. He's a speaker. He's a, had his own talk show. He's the narrative celebrities. He's he's the real deal. He's very 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 sharp. He's a philanthropist. He's given it back a lot. He's helping me a lot, anonymously, anonymously. And he's just a real good person. So without further ado, let's bring on the great Les Brown. Thank you. Thank you very much there. It's, it's a pleasure to, to be with you. Plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege, Aaron. I want to first of all thank you for working with our, our kids. You know, it's been a minute since we've seen each other. So I know you're kind of shocked when you look at me. I know you saw the movie called House Party. And it was kid and play. Well, I am kid <laughs> at 75. All right. <laughs> February 17th, I just turned 75. I said, I'm going to do something different up in here, up in here. <laughs> I want to say to the young people that are going to be playing today that one of the most important things today <laughs> is focus. As you look at yourself, look at your goals yeah. and the things that you want to do, the things that you want to implement and execute. With all the noise and the distractions that are going on in the world today, the people that are going to be able to become successful are the people that are acclimated to the kind of training that you are getting in playing chess. Because this is a thinking world, as a man thinketh, so is he, as he continues to think, so he remains. And so as you think, as you begin to learn how to become strategic, and how you approach not only this game, for, but also this thing called life. And it requires a level mm -hmm. of focus unlike you can ever begin to imagine because we got stuff that's coming our way every day. I, I'm reminded of something that Forrest Gump said in the movie. He said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. I was upset and angry with 2019 and said, I'm glad it's gone. Well, I changed my mind <laughs> because what we're dealing with up in here, up in here is a whole new game. And so in spite of all of that, the people that are going to be successful are the individuals that can focus in spite of, in spite of the distractions, in spite of all of the noise, in spite of the negative inner conversation that you might have that, oh my goodness, I can't do this. You can do this. You're more than a conqueror. You're here for the greater work. And the work that Orrin is doing with young people, teaching them how to think. I can't tell you the number of prisons and juvenile detention centers that are filled with young people and adults who weren't thinking and made some very, very, reckless decisions. Some situations is, and I think about it as very tragic, making a permanent solution for a temporary situation. Suicide among young people has increased dramatically. And so when people become overwhelmed with the crises they're facing, be it ejection from their homes, be foreclosures or evictions, all of the things that are around us right now that's going on because of the coronavirus, it requires a level of focus unlike we can ever begin to imagine. And the training parents that, that your children are going through being a part of this program, of focusing on being somebody and focusing on not buying into the crowd, not following everybody else, becoming independent thinkers. They said many people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65 because they go to their graves with their talents, abilities, and skills in them because they get caught up in the distractions of life. So congratulations for being here, carving out the time to learn and to master what you're about to do because it has far reaching habits. When you learn how to focus your mind, the possibility is unlimited. Even in this historic place where we come from right now, three kinds of people will come out of this, millionaires, billionaires, and witnesses. But because you have learned how to focus playing chess, you're gonna be one of these categories, the millionaire or the billionaire you will not be a witness. You have something special. You have greatness in you. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. This is in Mrs. Mamie Brown's Baby Boy and Orrin Hudson's Pride and Joy. Orrin, back to you, my brother. <laughs> 
Thank you, Les Brown. Um, you want to take a few questions, Les Brown, and share anything? Anybody have any questions for the great Les Brown? What's your rating in chess? What's the uh, question? What's he, your rating? What's Les, your rating? Les Brown is not an official. Uh, he's not officially rated. Uh, so oh, no, as a chess player? No, no, I don't have a rating there. I just have a rating in the category of being the number one. Some people say that I'm the number one speaker on the planet and trainer of speakers. So right. that's my only rating. I, I, I don't play chess anymore like I used to because it's not something you can jump in and jump out of. It's something that you want to marry yourself to. It has to be your magnificent obsession, and you do it on a regular basis because my ego just can't allow myself to be defeated by Warren or anybody else. <laughs> I would have to <laughs> have some practice time. <laughs> so Les, how did you get started in chess? My 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 neighbor, he played it and and he he was a guy that said if you learn this game, it will teach you how to be patient. It will teach you how to be persistent, and it will teach you how to be strategic. He said, and patience, persistence, and strategy is major in this thing called life. He said, most people don't have predetermined game plans and strategies for their lives. When you have learned how to play chess, you have to learn how to think several moves ahead. And when you apply that to life, this is the age of the late Peter Drucker calls, the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. There's no way that I could have gotten here and doing what I'm doing now, given my beginning, born in an abandoned building on a floor with a twin brother, being adopted, and being a foster kid first, then adopted, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, and put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade and feeling again in the eighth grade, but I had an instructor very much like Orrin Hudson, and who believe, I'll never forget, he challenged me one day in his class and said, I want you to work this problem out for me. And I said, I can't do that, sir. And he said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your kids. He said, do it anyhow. And I said, I can't. And the other students started laughing, saying, he's Leslie. He's DT. He's a twin. His brother is smart, but he's DT. And he asked, what's DT? And they said, he's the dumb twin. And I said, I am, sir. And the spirit of Orrin Hudson, he came from behind his desk and he pointed at me. He said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you cannot and should not become your reality. And from that day to this day, here I am at 75, 75 years on the planet. And those words interrupted my mind and gave me an expanded vision of myself. And the program that I first saw when I saw the T-shirt, Be Somebody, if there's anything that we need more than ever for our kids is to have a program that will teach them to be somebody, to operate above the thinking of being like everybody else. But you are an unrepeatable miracle. You were chosen, one out of 400 million sperm. You were chosen to be somebody. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, Les Brown, thank you so much. Uh, one last final question. If someone in the audience want to make one last final question for Les Brown. Yeah, Marcus, uh, Marcus Harris' hand is up. So I'm going to unmute him right now. You mute. You, you good? We hear you. Marcus, we hear you. Yeah. Marcus. Marcus Harris. I don't have, have my hand. May I ask the question? Sure, Christopher Bell. Please go forward with your question. So, uh, Mr. Les Brown, um, I've been listening to you pretty much like my entire life. Your motivational speeches have like uh, okay. greatly helped me, and uh, and my parents as well. And um, I just want to thank you for being there for me for that. And, uh, do you have any advice as far as? Um, not necessarily just chess exclusively, but like, yes, how to just keep going. Yes, 
Uh, one of the things that's very important, there are three steps that I encourage everybody, adults as well as young people. Number one, mental resolve. I encourage you to go online and watch Bless Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome and other motivational speakers. Why? To build mental resolve. There are things that are happening right now that have never happened before, and a lot of parents and individuals are feeling powerless and hopeless, and I think that has spiked the suicide rate among young people. So when we begin to expose them to positive messages and don't just allow them to listen to stuff that does not serve them, that does not fortify them, that does not strengthen them, we're doing a disservice to them. So we have to be selective of what our kids listen to. They're listening to us and so how we carry ourselves and the habits that we have and implement every day is very important. When I get up in the morning, I have a list of seven things that I'm thankful for that I write and say, Lord, I'm thankful. I have a scripture that I repeat, all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. So listening to motivational messages on a regular basis is very important. They did a study of some 3,000 top achievers around the world and they wanted to find out what was the common denominator among them that enabled them to reach their goals. And they discovered their mindset, their attitude, 85% because of their mindset, their attitude, 15% because of their aptitude. Next thing is, not only your mindset, mental resolve, but you have to have a game plan to upgrade your skill set. Not only in terms of chess, but building good relationships and looking at something that you want to do that's your passion. We were not born to work for a living, but to live our making and living our making will make our living. I was born to speak and to train speakers. So this is my magnificent passion. My children say, I talk in my sleep. <laughs> I used to get in trouble at school for talking so much. Now I get $70,000 an hour for speaking in the country, 225000 outside of the country. The next thing is be mindful of your relationships. Practice the principle of OQP, only quality people. Create collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. It's very important we look at and see who's in our ear and who we are around. My mother used to say, birds of a feather flock together. If you run around with losers, you will end up a loser. So upgrade your relationships and be mindful of making sure that you're in company with people that have the values you have, the focus, the discipline, and the willingness to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. Well, I will be remiss if I don't let Marcus Harris jump back in. Marcus, I think you got cut off early. So Marcus Harris, are you available now? He Marcus said he Harris. did not have a question, Oren. Okay, because I know he said earlier. Okay, so Renee, anything that you want to say to Les Brown? Anybody on the staff want to say to Les Brown? I would really appreciate. I really appreciate you coming by and speaking to the children. We are in very unusual and unprecedented times of COVID, and so much is put on their young emotional shoulders. And we really appreciate you giving them that extra boost to carry on in the midst of this situation, being able to do better. Well, we were born for such a time as this, and because of individuals like you, the staff, and Oren, you are working in the area that's most important because our young people, they're 40% of our population, but they are 100% of our future. And the things that you're now doing, the contributions, creating programs that allow them to be busy doing something productive. My mother used to say, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. So you're keeping them busy learning how to think and be strategic and build positive relationships and to live a life that will outlive them. So thank you so much. I am who I am because of people like you and Oren and the staff, people who saw some potential and were willing to commit some time to bring it out when I didn't see it myself. So I want to thank all of you. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. <laughs> you take care, you, you him. You. Yes, and y'all pray for my box hairstyle. I'm taking you back to the 80s up in here, up in here. <laughs> 
That's fine. That's Take fine. Care, all right. And I'm going to be playing prayer that you cross some hair, okay? All right, buddy. <laughs> Grass don't grow on a busy street, so you got a real good reason. Because <laughs> you're busy. Take care, my brother. Thank you, Les.